καμία για την ομολογία σε περίπτωση που την επιθυμία δεν μπορείτε να χρησιμοποιήσει έναν τρόπο που χρησιμοποιήσει. We're joined today with Monica Ponce de Leon. She's the Dean of Princeton School of Architecture. Thank you so much for coming. Thank uh, you for having me. So we have just a few questions that we wanted to talk to you to kind of uh, discuss some of the issues that I think that are relevant, not mm -hmm. only on regard to academia, but also in regard to practice. I think that yeah. these questions try to bridge that realm of how we start to look at uh, what is architecture within the schools of design, and then what happens to architecture in the practice itself. Because I think that what is fantastic about your work is that you really navigate both worlds. Mm -hmm. You go kind of in and out of both worlds with kind of amazing buildings in the world, and mm -hmm. then incredible mentorship, let's say, through mm -hmm. the two schools that you've been involved you know, for 10 years in Michigan, and now with the work in, in Princeton. So, so the first question would be like, what do you think that it's, is that relationship uh -huh. of academia and practice? And what do you think is the role of that, let's say, what is the role of that today? I don't see a distinction between what happens in schools and what happens in practice. I know it's very fashionable for practitioners to think that there is this great divide between the two. But the reality is that there is a fluid exchange between academia and practice, and it's really accelerated even more today because of the availability of information and the way the media has really been saturated with images that are produced in academia and images that are produced in practice. So they, there is not a divide anymore, I would say, between the two. They, it goes very fluidly from one to the other. I um, I think that the kind of inventiveness that happens in the context of a school is really liberating because it shows what is possible mm -hmm. and it produces lessons that then can be deployed in the world at large. So if we continue to think of a wall between the two, then the world is not going to change or the world is not going to evolve. So I'm very excited about that possibility of exchange that I think is now very pervasive, actually. It's sort of everywhere now. So I think it would be important to see for our students as they finish school and then they start to look at what, what, what type of architect they want to be. Is it one that you can see now as being present uh, or the, you know, almost as if the role of the architect has not changed mm -hmm. in so many years? Or do you think that it should renew? I think that the physical world today is even more important than ever before. I think that as digital media has become pervasive and we all live in our phones, the physical world actually has become even more important. So there is even a greater need, I would argue, for those who conceptualize the material and the present. And this is what architects do really, really well. And if we don't do it, other people do it, and they do it really badly, they do it without thinking, they do it without any kind of cultural content, they do it in a way that is really about different criteria that are not the construction of culture. So, so I am actually very much a proponent, this is a big debate actually that we're having at Princeton because there are some faculty that tell our undergrads, oh, it's okay if you don't pursue architecture, you can do whatever you want with your architecture degree, my feeling is I want them to become architects. I want them to continue. I want them to pursue building in the quote unquote real world, right? So I, I do think that you have a very good point that of course practice and academia are very different. But I think that the difference is actually empowering. It's not one that points at the weakness of academia. You know, it used to be popular when you and I were in school mm -hmm. that people would say the problem with academia is that it's not in the quote unquote real world. We need to have design build projects and students need to have real quote unquote real constraints. I think the opposite. I think that the strength of the moment in which our students are being educated is the possibility for them to speculate about alternatives to the status quo and imagine things that don't seem possible when you are outside of school. 
But by putting them out there in the world, they actually become possible. They become plausible. Others see it. They themselves see it, right? So that when you go into the real world, instead of thinking of, oh, these are the limitations, there's not much that I can do, in my opinion, we need to constantly ask, why not? Why can't it be this way? Why does it have to be the other way, right? And through that inquiry that we learn in school, then we might actually have an impact in the world. But, you know, I'm very, Americans call it Pollyanna. <laughs> and a very optimistic person, you know, so I always think that there's a better way. And I, and I think that that's really the, the beauty of school, that you can actually bracket all of these forces that, you know, they pass. You know, the, the problems of practice are always different. And the problems of practice always pass. You know, code, it used to be that people were obsessed with codes. The code has changed a hundred times. You design through it, around it, with it, against it, right? It's not, it's not important at the end. Ideas is what is important, and ideas is what you test here in school. So The more that we are within architecture, the more we can push architecture mm -hmm, to be mm -hmm. much better. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. I always say architecture is power. I, I got into a debate with a journalist in Cleveland about four years ago because I was talking to high school students, and I told them architecture is power. And I went down different examples of why I thought architecture was power. And he really was horrified. He's like, what do you mean? Architects are the least powerful. And I said, no, we make space. And I think your example of what, is being what has been happening in the last two weeks, that these moments where we actually see people seeking space as a way of materializing um, aspirations is a moment that, is a, that for me proves my point about architecture being important and architecture being today perhaps more important than ever before. Yeah, I think when, when you see all these teenagers marching and then uh, defending and then it's like it's... In space. Yeah, in, in, really in public important. spaces. In, in space, streets, exactly. in plazas, in, uh, um, and so it's, it's... They're not just trolling or tweeting. Uh, yeah. It's, it's in actual space. Communication happens maybe in other ways, but then it's, it's expanded. So, so I, I think that in energizes, I yes, guess, exactly. that it can energize exactly. different, the different generations. But it materializes culture. And what I mean by that is not that it reflects culture. It's not that it takes what is out there and then makes it physical. No, actually, through the lens of the architect, it actually anticipates different versions of reality. And that reality then shapes what is to come. It, it has the influence of what has happened in the past. It has the impact of what is happening at that moment. But it certainly shapes the future. And that to me is what is amazing about design, what is amazing about architecture. <laughs> Thank you.